don't know. But I'm going to move on because this was about uh, DMX. Now, let's start with the memorial service. Rest in peace, DMX, first of all. Um, I love the convoy. I'm not going to lie. All the bikes following the coffin. I don't think his body was in that coffin. I don't think nobody that was watching it thought that his body was in that coffin. Like, if you know New York roads, New York roads is the worst roads in America. There's so many potholes and bumps and bruises in the roads that him on a monster truck, no. Nah. You're not going to tell me his body was in there. No way in hell was his body in there. I know. The, the, the thought of it is dope. Yeah, you know, but it was a symbolization. As you can see, it was that wasn't even the same coffin from yesterday. Uh, I mean, today wasn't the same coffin from yesterday. Um, I doubt highly that his body was in there, but the the look of it, I think uh, it was big. It was it was bigger than Biggie's, uh, you know, driving Biggie into Brooklyn. Like that was major. So shout out to Rough Riders and and not only in New York. I seen dudes the in Cali and different states. They all was riding like at the same time, even though they wasn't in New York. Like that, yo, that was beautiful. That was big. That was definitely big. It was emotional. I I felt more, it touched my soul more seeing all those bikes follow that coffin than it, I didn't feel no, nothing touched my soul about that memorial service. The first one, it was very dark. I didn't like Kanye in them, in the hoods, Kanye wearing a fucking mask, like, Kanye wearing that mask was spooky. Uh, all them quiet people in red in them hoods and the lights dark, the red tint just looked like Bohemian Grove. Like it just looked like a total ritual for me. People say, oh, DM9, DMX like, like the red. I ain't seen DMX wear red once in the last year. Not saying I saw the nigga every day, I didn't. Um, I know what red symbolizes, and some of y'all out there know what it symbolizes. Um, I didn't like it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna say in cap. I'm not going. It's like I didn't like it. I did not like it. I did not like it. I did not like it, and I don't think that. People say, oh, no, DMX went to Kanye West Sunday services a few times. So, what that mean? He went to Kanye West services. So what? He, he went to a lot of churches in his life. That don't mean that he would have did it the way they, they did it, just because he, he went to Sunday service. I didn't like it. It was very demonic. It was very demonic. All that dark red, like, I didn't like it, man. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I did not like it. What I did like about it was Styles P, who talked from the heart. I did like Dragon, who talked from the heart. I did like Jadakiss when he spoke. Um... I even like when Nas spoke. I felt like Nas was about to break down. Um, but what I didn't like in both shows, 
and I don't know what it may be, but I didn't like that Dame Grease didn't get to speak unless I missed it at the Barclay. I mean, the first show. I know I didn't miss Dame Grease on the second show because I sat there and watched, went through that whole five-hour train wreck. I don't think they, they, like, even in the eulogy, wait, let me stick with the first show first. I didn't like that Kanye was on the pyramid. I didn't like that DMX coffin was on the pyramid. But this is my personal feelings. I'm not family. I don't have no say so on that. I'm just expressing my feelings. It was spooky. I didn't understand DMX coffin being on that pyramid with this big ass image is a bunch of black slaves. Like Kanye, what the fuck was that? Why you got all these slaves over this man coffin? And then you got a whole bunch of other black. I don't, I didn't. I, it was a little different, dogs. It was a little different. I don't know what, what point you was trying to make with that. With all those little black kids. Like, like, it was just too dark and spooky. It was all red, then it was black and white. If you know, you know. Swiss says some interesting things. I would love to know who he was taking shots at. I'm going to assume that Irv Gotti wasn't able to speak due to what he said about DMX uh, died from an overdose of crack and with fentanyl in it. So I'm thinking that being that he spoke and said that prior, excuse me, to the funeral, they didn't let him speak. Which I thought was odd because He's the reason why DMX was at Def Jam. He's a big part of DMX story. Why wasn't he able to speak? Same with Dame Grease. Big part of DMX beginning throughout. Why wasn't he able to speak? Now, the Barclay Center was nothing like I was so disappointed, and I was like, oh, it wasn't no preacher there, this, that, no, boom. That, that wasn't the funeral joke. That was a memorial service. All right, boom. I didn't like it. That's my personal opinion. Some people loved Kanye and the singing and everything. That's cool. They don't They don't know what I know, and they, don't, they can't see as far as I can see. All they heard was Kanye music, and that's all they heard. Their eyes don't see what I see when I see certain things. So, yes, those people can sing. Yeah, they can sing. And they sung way better gospel than Faith did tonight. With that said, let's get into tonight. The funeral service tonight made me feel a lot better. It was lit. We could see. We could see the people. It wasn't real dark. I don't, you know, the red coffin, not my taste. Um, but um, once again, that's not my place. Um, I don't know if the people that all performed today it was a personal connection with DMX. 
And this is why they let these people perform. But I expected to see more bigger names. Not saying that these people aren't big that performed. But let me rephrase that. Not bigger names. I thought I was going to see more people from our culture represent DMX. Mary J. Blige is, you know, maybe some Def Jam artists. I just felt there was an absence from the entertainment industry, from our culture, or the people that will be in the same CD rack of your collection with DMX music or in the same playlist with the, I just didn't understand outside of faith, why didn't we get more artists from X genre to perform? I didn't understand that. Once again, it's not my place. Um, the funeral was extremely long. Five hours is definitely the longest funeral I ever attended or watched on TV ever. That was a BET. Um, I got to, you know, this is a funeral, so I'm trying to keep the truth, the truth and without it coming across disrespectful and nobody getting hurt by what I'm saying, but trying to be honest as I can. The number one person that I love the most was to share a sentence. That woman is a class act, dogs. She is a class act. If you did not see any part of the funeral service tonight, all you got to do, if you don't want to sit through a whole five hours, just skip up right to, to share a Simmons part. And just let it play. Do not skip it. Do not touch it. Do not do nothing. I'm live on YouTube, y'all, Patreon, uh, Instagram. Um, and listen to the words that she say. And I'm telling y'all, you can tell Tashira was biting her MF and tongue, especially after what she already endured and watched and had to go up behind a lot of stuff. And for her to stand there and not speak her 100% truth and sugarcoat it for the world, salute, hugs, kisses, everything to her, yo. Yo, <sighs> y'all see how many kids DMX had up there? 15 kids. Only four of those was to share us. And she been with DMX the longest. How many of y'all women out there could have did what she did. Where you got four kids with a man and you've been with him 30 something years. And he got 11 kids outside of you. And you've been with him the longest. And you could get up there and look at all these goddamn kids that were made while you were married to this man. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying right now? 
Do y'all understand what I'm saying right now? Imagine your mother being married to your father. And he had, a, I, I don't know how many he had after her, after they got divorced. But I'm going to say he had about maybe five to eight kids during his marriage, maybe, judging by the ages. If your mother or your father had eight kids, eight kids during his marriage with your mother, how strong would you think your mother would be able to be to get up on that stage and look at all these motherfucking kids made outside of wedlock and still hold it together? How many of y'all chicks out here would have been able to hug the woman Did y'all see her hug that woman and tell her she loved that woman? That told her, that said she been with DMX for 10 years? Don't you know that crosses the timeline of Tashira's marriage? How strong is that woman, yo? How strong is that woman? to deal with X during his addiction, infidelities. And still got up there and ain't say a mother effing thing bad about him. She didn't say one thing bad about DMX. And we know she got hundreds of stories because the kids in the front row just told it. And she said nothing bad about him. Yo, my niggas. And yo, I'm going to say this now. Because Swiss said something. And much love and respect to Tashira Simmons. As, before I move on, let me give her that. Baby girl, you are a class act woman. Not only are you a class act, you looked fabulous up there. You looked it like the superstar up there. I don't think nobody got on that stage looked as good as you, sis. You look like you sold 10 million goddamn albums and ain't had the stress in the world. And I know you done been through some goddamn stress in your life. You looked Fabulous, sis. You look good. You look fabulous. And I know it was niggas in there that probably was drooling over you when you was with X. That looked at you now. You look a hundred times better than you did in your prime age. I know they looked at you and just like, yo, look at her, yo. Niggas probably was drooling. You looked amazing up there. You held it together like a G. Like a G, Tashira. You are a gangstress to the... Yo. You are the epitome of what every street nigga dreamed of having. A woman that will ride or die with you to the end. And I know y'all got divorced. Any woman at in your shoes would have got a divorce. Like, who's, who's going to sit there and have a husband that got 10 kids outside of the marriage? I, we understand that. But the fact that you got up there and kept it a honey. And, and kept that man on a pedestal. And you even wasn't you, you wasn't even with him at the time of his demise, sister. You preached the gospel. Yo, we gotta love you for that. 
Anybody that hate or said anything negative about you up there ain't nothing but a goddamn devil and a hater. I love what you did. I love what you did. And nobody up there did nothing better than what you did. I seen people use that time as an opportunity to promote. I didn't think that was the time for promotion. I didn't think it was the time for product placement, but that's none of my business. People do what they do when it's their stuff and their platform. They can do what they want. For me, I just, I didn't think that it was tasteful. Um, As a person that used to ride bikes, I wouldn't recommend kids. Or encourage kids to, at that age, to want to ride. I, I don't see too many kids die on bikes. Um, I just, I don't, I don't know that that part of it kind of threw me off. And it didn't happen once; it happened twice. And then the, I didn't, I didn't understand that part. I didn't understand that part. And why don't be mad at me? You know, you know, niggas gonna throw fuel on this. You do what you want. You build Rough Riders. That shit, your brand. I. It was just kind of weird with the presentation of the vest at a funeral. It's really weird. It's really weird. Um. Moving on, Faith Evans. That was terrible, Faith. I don't know if you were sober, drunk. I don't know what the hell would it. Faith, I'm going to keep it real with you. Stevie J, do not get mad at me. You know I love you. You're probably going to call my phone right now. That was embarrassing, Faith. I think you know the five Ps. Somebody sent it to me. You know, preparation, like, ugh, faith. That was horrible, faith. You sounded horrible. I don't know what your throat sounded so dry. And then, faith. I'm trying to be as respectful as possible. This was a funeral. Let me think of the right words to say. Faith, I think that y'all should have prepared. Not only, it wasn't even live, Faith. Y'all recorded this. First, somebody recorded it with the phone up right. And then somebody, no, nah, y'all supposed to turn it the other way. And then y'all had to cut it and, and turn it the other way. Um, you uh, Instagram, this is over. Y'all gonna have to come to my um, YouTube or my Patreon. All right, much love. Thanks for all the uh, donations. All right, all the cash apps. Um, Faith, you were supposed to prepare for this. I don't know if this was some last minute, it couldn't have been last minute because it was pre recorded. Faith, you said you was from the church. Now, I know you done been around the devils for the last 20 years, but how do you forget the words to a gospel song and you came from the church, love? That shit was embarrassing, Faith. You look so bad. And then you sit in there a R and B diva you once was, you may still consider yourself a a diva. Never gets caught without no shoes on, sister. You on a national platform? No, this ain't national. You on a worldwide platform for DMX the Great's funeral, 
and you performing in your socks? Faith Evans, you got on national TV, excuse me, you got on a worldwide platform you perform and your voice sounds crappy. You don't have on shoes. You're performing in your socks. Not only that, you don't know the words to a gospel song. And you from the church. And why would you do that song after Kanye and them just did it, embodied it? Now, there wasn't nothing wrong with the singing that Kanye thing. It was the imagery. But why would you sing the same song they sing and they killed it? Faith Evans. Sister, they introduced you to perform for DMX. You knew you sounded so horrible and you didn't know the lyrics. You were turning around to the guy on the piano and saying, what's the lyrics? I, I, uh, what was... And then you start passing the goddamn microphone around? You mean to tell me you turned that into a freestyle session for DMX funeral? We didn't know these other people. And I'm sitting there telling the, the room that I'm sitting with, I'm like, yo, are they really trying to promote some new artists by having them sitting in the frame? Are you serious? And then you start passing the mic around for other people to sing. And none of y'all know the lyrics. None of y'all knew the lyrics. Faith, preparation, sister, for a funeral, you didn't prepare for this? Stevie J in the black playing the drums? Yo, y'all was bugging. Like you really passed the mic around? Yo, dogs, y'all disrespected DMX. None of y'all wouldn't, uh, half of y'all wouldn't have did the things y'all did if DMX was alive, yo. Yo, that, that yo, man. And what's making me mad the most about Faith Evans is that it wasn't live. They sat there and watched what they recorded and decided to send that. Y'all didn't think to re-record. Oh, this looks bad. Oh, my God. You didn't cut my feet out. I told you don't show my feet. I ain't have no shoes. I couldn't get no shoes. I told you to cut my feet out. Yo, we didn't know the lyrics. Come on, y'all. We can't send this to BET. We don't. We we look crazy. You mean to tell me y'all didn't watch the playback and say, "Yo, we cannot send this." Or y'all just said, "That's DMX. I don't give a fuck about that nigga." Y'all been sitting at it. Leo Cohen. Liar Cohen. Oh, I pronounced it wrong. I'm sorry. That's how the preacher called him. Liar Cohen. Um, it is Leo. Um,
How many of y'all heard what Leo said? Let me let y'all hear what Leo said. He sent his video looking like this, y'all. Did y'all get that? Did y'all hear that? Oh yeah, y'all heard it. I can tell from the comments y'all heard it. <laughs> I can tell from the comments y'all heard that. One second, y'all. I'm going to play it one more time. This is a fucking crazy ass. Rest in peace, Black Raw. Be y'all. Now y'all know that Black Raw coming through on that goddamn 18 wheeler. If X went through like that, it's about to be woe. All right.
All right. I just want to play that one more time. Nobody's saying Black Raw going to get the same treatment as DMX. But don't you ever underestimate Puff. That nigga's not going to let nobody show him out. Hold on, let's play this again. What looks like Lyle Cohen. So what looks like Lyle Cohen. You said it right, buddy. You've been this in seminary, you know that. Like I said, Leor Cohen is going to bring a special message. Me tight. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you with that. Like, I don't know if Animal Kitchen, good looking, man. Thanks for the donation. I appreciate you. I don't know if I'm pretty much sure he was saying uh the evil side took out the good side. Or the, I guess you want to say the addict or whatever. I don't know what he was trying to say, but it, it just came off very wrong. Maybe he just don't know how to talk. He been around black people for a long time. He still didn't learn how to talk to us. That that wasn't the proper language to be using. Um, the Minister Farrakhan was way better than Leo Cohen. Uh, Kevin Lyles said some great things. He tried to clean it up for the Def Jam crew. I wonder if Kaiser and Julie and all of them, why they ain't all got to get up there and speak if they even show their face. I think Russell Simmons was a little bit honest when he talked about x saying that you know i guess he talked to x about x addiction and you know being him being a former addict and i guess he said that maybe he didn't try hard enough or talk to him enough about it he said i think he mentioned to x in a more of a sarcastic way and not in an enduring way or some to that magnitude, but I guess more or less he's saying if he knew that his demise would come at this time in his life, he probably would have stepped up a little more and talked to X a little more and tried to help him. But that's water under the bridge. That's crying over spilled milk. But I appreciate Russell at least saying that, you know what I'm saying, um, and acknowledging that DMX boy Def Jam back to life. Um, 
another thing that I didn't understand was why Irv not mentioned in the eulogy. How many of y'all caught that? They talked about DMX life and they uh, talked about him being signed to Columbia. And then they just missed, they jumped over Irv, they jumped over Dane Grease, and then made it look like Swiss Beast was the first producer that he worked with and he blew up. I didn't think that was cool. I, but, you know, um, Ariel, what up? God bless you too. Thank you. I appreciate the donation. Um, I didn't, I just ain't on uh, Mark William. Good looking for the donation if I didn't thank you earlier. Um, I just, they did, they just skipped over Earth. They skipped over Day in Greece. And then they gave the props to Swiss. And then, moved on and then they mentioned Dane Grease around the Great Depression. I'm like, whoa, hold on. Why is Dane Grease getting shitted on all around the board when it comes to DMX? Did they fall out or he fall out with Rough Riders or something? Like why wasn't Dane Grease at the memorial or the funeral? Why didn't he get to speak? Why do Swiss get all the fame and glory for DMX success? Without get at me dog I don't think that, I ain't gonna say that. Get At Me Dog introduced us all to DMX on a major level. Do anybody disagree with that? The first time you heard DMX was what? If you heard about him, before, Born Loser or whatever song he had before, uh, Get At Me Dog, fine. But, Get At Me Dog, to me, is what made DMX a star. Get At Me Dog, to me, is what changed the course of hip-hop for a second. Get At Me Dog became a phrase. So... Why doesn't Dame Grease get recognition when it comes to DMX career? Because that's not even on the only high joint he did for DMX. There's, there's plenty. So why why doesn't he get to speak? Tasha Tinkerbell, much love to you too. Thank you, love. Yolanda, what up? I see you. I don't I don't understand why he didn't get to speak. At neither one and like wow you know i i why didn't irv get to speak maybe because of what he said about the drug but irv was present at the funeral i'm glad that i got to see that he was there because regardless to what irv kind of starting to remind me of me just a little bit just a little bit only thing I just say it from the heart, and I'm not intoxicated or anything when I say, not saying that he was, but Irv played the game sometimes. Irv not to play the game sometimes. But sometimes Irv want to keep it real. So that's why I say, is this a little bit of Irv in me? Sometimes Irv say some shit. It might not be the right time to say it, or it might not be something that people like. But you got to respect that he's being honest. And when I, I say I say that to say, like, I know there's a lot of people that hate me or dislike me because I might say something that's the truth that they may not want to hear. And when I'm, uh, when Irv came out and, and said what he said about X overdosing and, and the only thing that's when whether it was true or not but we all know that the first story that came out was X overdose and had a heart attack and went into a coma and everything so whether what Irv is saying is true or not I'm sorry y'all I'm yawning but y'all know what I've, I've been doing this last week um
Joey Dub, good looking for the cash out. Appreciate you. Um, Irv, when I like when I saw that, and I'm like, all right, it could be true. It cannot be true. But why would Irv go out there and say some shit like that if it wasn't true? Why would he want to tarnish his man legacy and then sit in the funeral if it wasn't true? He didn't retract what he said. It just probably wasn't the right timing for it. But can you respect his honesty? Hell yeah. Because we all want to know the truth. Joey Dub, good looking. So that's what I mean about what I see a little of me and Irv got a little thing. Might say some shit that we know people ain't gonna like, but who, a lot of people don't like the truth. Most of the girls on Instagram don't like the truth. That's why they use the filters because they know the true them is not that, but they know that the, using the filter covers the blemishes, co covers the imperfections. So they use them to make them look like something that you're not gonna see when you meet them in person. Same thing with the makeup, the wigs, you know what I'm saying? If you see the truth, you might not like it. So I, re I, re I respect Irv truth. Like I said before, I respect it. He said, was the timing right? No. He could have did it tomorrow, right after the funeral. Because then we probably got to him speak. Janie, good looking. Thanks for the uh, cash out. You know what I'm saying? So, I just ain't like that Irv didn't get to speak at the memorial or the funeral because we know he's a big part of X story. Y'all gonna let Leo send in a video and Irv boy Leo to DMX. Now is that fair? This man ain't even a, a black man. He didn't he didn't know talent. It was Irv that knew the talent. You think that's fair that Leo get to speak on DM DMX and then say some dumbass shit and Irv didn't get to talk? Because he said something that may be true that we don't know. But if DMX, we know DMX is his man. That nigga sat in the funeral. So he might just be telling us the truth because that was the first story. Look at Marcel. So I don't know who else is missing. A lot of people's in my chat saying, "Where was Jay Z?" Jay Z didn't. X didn't fuck with Jay Z. Jay Z ain't fuck with X. We know this. You know what I'm saying? Did you see Jay Z say give out a statement saying "Rest in peace"? Send a video. Did you see Beyonce post? Rest in peace, DMX. No, because they don't rock with him. So there ain't no need to be fake because he dead. We all know that. You know what I'm saying? So he was at the Barclays Center, but don't expect him to get up there. And so for niggas to boo him, come on, man. X wasn't fake. If X was one of them fake rappers, yeah, he he, he would have came up there and talked and all that other stuff. But he know better. X might haunt that nigga. But 
Overall, man, I I did I st- I liked his kids up there talking. Um, it, it was some more BS that I'm not gonna mention because I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But honestly speaking, I know this is not even possible. But I swear to God, I wish X could have produced and directed his own goddamn funeral. Because it would have been a million times better coming from his vision. So, as you know, DMX is now sent off. We got to send off Black, Black Raw and Shock G. Hip hop, we losing us. And it's starting to feel like I need to give this message to y'all young ones. If you're 25 and younger, I'm going to let you know that if you do hard drugs and alcohol, your life expectancy is going to be about another additional 25 years. Maybe 35 years. If you want to live longer than that, I suggest be easy on the liquor, be easy on the hard drugs. And this generation, y'all on harder drugs than when we came up. Get yourself off them drugs. Be easy with the alcohol. Whether DMX died over or overdose or not, a lot of his health complications came from uh, substance abuse. Black Rob, his demise came from a lot of alcoholism abusing alcohol he was a drinker which uh took a a wear and tear on his body and your body is your temple and it destroyed his kidneys and livers and on i mean his kidneys i don't know how his livers was but if you don't want to be on dialysis if you don't like needles if you don't like hospital visits then you could put yourself in the position of Black Rob. So don't be a fool and repeat the same steps these brothers did because that would be called insanity. You learn from these brothers. You know what I'm saying? And don't make the same mistakes. Shock G, another one. I don't know where Shock G passed from, but I know Shock G was a, a substance abuser as well. Anybody that know him know that Shock G used to get twisted too. He used to hang with Parliament, uh, George Clinton and them. You know, they high is a different type of high. But I'm sure that I don't know what Shock G passed from, but if you know anybody close to anybody in Digital Underground or anybody that's from Oakland or everything, they will tell you Shock G indulged in uh, substance abuse as well. So let this be a lesson. You got DMX, one of the greatest lyricists. You got Black Raw who was phenomenal with the lyrics and songs as well. You got Shock G, one of the best producers in hip hop. And y'all don't even put him in the in the uh the company of the Pete Rocks and the uh Premiers and the the uh Jermaine Dupree's and the Dr. Dre's. Um Lionel Dub, good looking Lionel. Appreciate the cash out. Um 
Like Shock G produced a lot of great music. You know what I'm saying? A lot of great music for a lot of great artists. And I think that even though producers may know that he's iller than most producers, for fans, he's he doesn't come up in a conversation when you talk about best producers, but he's one of the best producers. He plays music. He plays various instruments. This nigga, like, Y'all will put Puff as a producer before Shock G and Sha Puff can wear, he couldn't even put his foot in Shock G's shoes if it was a size 20 shoe. He still couldn't put his foot in there. Like Shock G is L, very talented brother. This is a dude that was Shock G and Humpty on the same record. Like this dude is talented, dude. Super talented dude, but substance abuse is taking us out. Now, Shaq G was a little old. I think Shaq G probably was like 57, maybe. DMX, like 51, 52, maybe 50. I don't know, 50. Black Raw probably didn't even get to 50 or was about to approach 50. You got to remember, we all came into this industry around the same time and saw success around the same time. And success bring money. Money uh, enables you to do things that you like. And if you got a lot of money, you can do a lot more of what you like. You know what I'm saying? Black Rose 51. Thank y'all. Um, so I say all that to say that I came in the game at 25. I'm sure X, you know, came in 18, 19, 20. I'm sure Shock G came in late teens, early 20s. Rob, same thing. And 25 years later, these brothers is gone. So to my young niggas, don't look at me as the corny old nigga telling you don't do drugs. Look at me as the nigga that lived longer than you did. You still got to catch up to me. You still got to get some gray. Only drug I ever tried in my life was marijuana. And I don't even smoke marijuana anymore. Because the marijuana now, like, ain't like you you getting a, uh, you know what you're getting, all these chemical weeds just got me to the point where I just scared. Like, I'm just scared to even try anything anymore or anything. It's just, it's just too much. So I'm, I'm just saying this to say to y'all young dudes that's in your early 20s and your teens. Look at those before you and see what it did to them. If you don't care and you don't plan on being here for your children and your grandchildren and to help your parents when they get elderly, then by all means, all to you fall. But if you have ambitions and goals to do things, and you around these people in the entertainment, they're going to push drugs on you. It happened to me. If somebody say, hey, you want to party? Just no party doesn't mean going to rub up on some ass in the club. When they tell you you want to go party in the entertainment world, you're going to get a, a little cellophane bag filled with pills, cocaine, weed, ecstasy, all kinds of drugs. And that's when they mean party. And they're going to offer you that and then your life will go downhill. You remember that sweet little girl that was on In the House with LL? And when she got to Hollywood, it destroyed her, Maya Campbell? Do not let that shit be you. Have you seen DMX movie, Never Die Alone? How he went to uh, Hollywood and turned that woman out on Heron and it was Coke first? 
Do not let it be you. You can succeed and be in these circles without trying to be cool sniffing some cocaine. I heard Charlemagne say sometime, uh, some time ago, he used to hang around with people in the entertainment industry and they would put coke and just to act like he was cool, he would act like he was sniffing and sweep it on the floor. Like, why not just say, I don't do cocaine? But as you can see, a guy like him that want to be in the circle, instead of telling people, no, I don't do drugs, I don't do cocaine, he's going to fake it just to be in the circle. Who going to fake and sweep it on the floor? Bullshit. But if that's what you say you did, you did. But how many times can you fake it when a nigga, the same nigga you told that, that you faked that you sniffed the coke and you got away with it? What do you do when the lines is right there in front of you and they're in the party and they tell you to hit it again? You say, oh, no, nah, I don't want, nah, we've seen you hit it before. Now you got to hit it for real. Don't put yourself in that position, people. So no joke, man. I love y'all for all the support. And y'all haters, y'all just made me greater and more stronger. So keep hanging, because you push me to be greater. All y'all support me. Thank you so much, man. Thank y'all so much, especially in this last week, man. I know I haven't been on, and I'm sorry. But it's a lot going on. Um, I will be live tomorrow. with an update on this situation. Can y'all please keep everybody in prayers? I don't have to name everybody. Just pray for us as a blanket statement, a blanket prayer for everybody, even by everybody in my damn chat right now. Um, Y'all be safe out there. It's, it's, it's a danger to even walk out your house now. With what's going on? I seen a, uh, Eddie Griffin. Shout out to Eddie Griffin, the comedian. I don't know where he got these statistics from, but he said 188 black people was killed by cops after the verdict came out um, on that cop found guilty. I don't know how true it is with those numbers, but I know damn sure for sure I know somebody that got killed by a cop the next day. So several cops. Um, you know, I'm lost for words right now because I got so much thought in my head thinking about tomorrow. But I see y'all tomorrow. For sure, I will be back tomorrow. And I will definitely keep y'all in tune with what's going on. All right. Oh, somebody asked me before I go, how do I feel about uh, I am Blaze on the Patreon? Good looking. Um, he asked me, how do I feel about the guy that the Rev cut off at the end of DMX funeral? That was kind of odd to me. Um, First of all, the dude wasn't on the main stage. I don't I don't know how that other mic was on. I don't or maybe they let him get up there and they cut him. I don't know, but at that that the funeral was five hours long, Blaze. You know what I'm saying? Like Blaze, it was five hours. I don't know if you ever been to a funeral, but a two hour funeral is too long. So a five hour funeral, I'm sure they was ready to go. And everybody like, and like dude said, they took him off the program. I'm sure he was not the only person that took off the program, but I don't think that. I guess I don't think that once they asked him to stop, whatever, I think he should have just stopped just because they was in the church and then going back and forth with the pastor was kind of rude. Um, like that was DMX moment. That wasn't that man moment. And I understand he loved X and knew X, you know, 
before X probably was X, but it's a time and place. Brother, you wasn't the only person that didn't get to speak. There's a lot of people I felt like that should have spoke that was a part of DMX career. But that, that like I said, there ain't nothing out of place. And trust me, if DMX could have been there for his funeral, a lot of shit that you saw, you wouldn't have saw. Trust me. All right? Choke no joke. I'll catch y'all tomorrow, man. Thanks for all the donations. Thanks for all the love. Y'all ignorant niggas. Y'all keep staying ignorant. I'm not even responding to y'all niggas no more. So y'all can say all the dumb shit in the chat that y'all want. <laughs> You're never going to get me to respond to y'all niggas. Uh, shout out to my moderators that held me down tonight. I wasn't really paying attention. I was trying to stay focused over on this side, so I ain't see no dumbass comments. But thank you, Bigger BX, Young Yala, Silk Team, um, Queen, Kiana. Um, and if I'm missing anybody, oh, Sad Fred, um, thank y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. All right, good night, y'all. Catch y'all tomorrow.